Shown here is an overview of the circuit design. First two AC inputs, music transmitted through an audio jack and a signal from a microphone, are combined together in a mixer circuit. The AC output from the mixer is coupled with a DC input through a summing circuit. This produces the necessary voltage and current levels for the laser diode, which is approximately 4 to 5 volts and 50 milliamps. The diode shines 50 feet away onto a photoresistor, where the signal is amplified to approximately 1 volt and then converted to sound through a speaker. Here we have an LT spice diagram of the transmitting end of the circuit. The music and microphone signals are represented as AC sine wave inputs. The highlighted portion of the circuit represents the mixer. An op amp is used to combine the AC signals via a negative feedback loop. Because both inputs have about the same voltage level of 50 millivolts, the resistors in the mixer are given equal weight. Note that we use 0 volts and 9 volts as the balance for the op amp, since we can't get negative 9 volts given only two batteries. The next part of the circuit is the bias T, which combines AC and DC signals. A capacitor is used to block DC current from entering the AC source, and an inductor is used to block the AC signal from the DC source. The bias T allows the diode to achieve its required voltage and current levels. Here we have the actual implementation of the transmitter. In the top left corner you can see the microphone, the black box in the middle is the op amp mixer, and the bias T is right below that, the green inductor. Here we have one of my least favorite artists after dealing with the bias T circuit, coming into the circuit, being received by the oscilloscope in red. We can see in this clip the laser works at a distance of over 50 feet. My lab partner can clearly hit this kid in the eye all the way down the hallway. For our original receiving circuit design, we had a photoresistor with one end grounded and the positive end passing through a 10 microfarad capacitor into the non-inverting terminal of the operational amplifier. The capacitor was placed there to clear any DC interference. For the op amp, we used the given 9 volt battery with the positive end entering the positive VCC terminal and the negative end being grounded. The op amp was there to amplify the incoming AC signal so it could reach the 1 volt required to activate the 8 ohm speaker. Lastly, the output of the op amp was passed through a 10 microfarad capacitor to once again take care of any DC interference. What we ended up finding worked instead was simply having our photoresistor in series with our speaker, and when we shined the laser on the photoresistor, sound was playing from our speaker, so we opted to go with this design instead.